Hey, it's Steve Zonardo here with Remax Experts, Zonardo Associates. Happy Monday morning. Just a real quick update on the market. Current inventory, 13,453 units. So we're up about uh, 300 units since the last week. Sold, we have 1,022 sold. So that's actually up about 200 units from last week. Uh, terminated units, we're at 803 units. So that's up 200 from last uh, week. But ultimately, they're terminating and relisting. And also the, the expired, uh, huge expired. I guess this is based on, let's say these were listed prior to Christmas and now they've expired off into February. But we got almost 5,000 expired listings in uh, in this week. So ultimately, these will probably be relisted and, and going forward. Because what we found too is we've we've had properties that were we couldn't sell last year and then we all sold them uh, this year. So it uh, kind of shows you the market's going on an uptick currently right now. Um, we're on a fury back in Toronto, no doubt. We have uh, consistent sales going on and multiple offers on various properties. Like what I think we mentioned last week, we had one property um, that we had 11 offers on, we sold over asking, then we had another property that we couldn't sell um, in 2023, and we had on the market for, market for like three months, and then we ended up selling it uh, last week also. So those those um, sold simultaneous. But this is the base on the structure currently right now. What, what we wanna use is go with the bidding war strategy. And if it doesn't uh, effectively sell on the bidding date, what we do is just cancel, relist, put it at a set price, but the whole goal is to get as many people through the property as possible. Um, so that's our, our common strategy going forward. Um, quick thing too, so this week here, the Bank of Canada meets, let me just pull in some data here. So Bank of Canada meets on March 6th. This is gonna basically determine if they're gonna raise the policy rate another quarter percent or they're gonna hold it. Our guess is they're gonna hold um, back into end of December. I, what I predicted was hold, hold, lower so we'll see what happens obviously the cpi's dropped under three percent i think we're at 2.8 percent clearly there's no indication that inflation has gone down and these are like numbers they're playing with you know there's basically cpi's built up a basket full of uh goods and now I, I believe they're pulling items out of this basket so it makes the inflation look lower um they're doing that here in the states also but it is what it is so we're at uh, under three percent CPI and uh, so I would imagine they're gonna hold it this week and then lower it in, in the weeks to come. We're having, like, again, a lot of optimism going on. We have a shortage of houses, folks, on both sides of the border. So you're gonna have, as soon as these rates come down, it's it's gonna be a fury. You almost gotta time it perfectly when to get into the market um, and make sure you get into a mortgage that you can kind of break in one or two years uh, without penalties in order to kind of capitalize on when you purchase and, and ride the value. Uh, this is an article. Uh, this is an interesting article. It says affordability, high taxes spur exodus from Canada's prices cities. So prices cities, obviously southern Ontario, uh, BC, and, and um, Vancouver and stuff like that. But what people are doing is they're migrating out into other provinces and also leaving the country. I haven't. It's, it's so weird, um, you know, post COVID talking to people that actually want to leave Canada. This is never. If you've never heard about this, if you born in Canada, you kind of died in Canada, now is this huge influx. And I think it's obviously to do a lot with politics, the way the country's going, I think that's huge. Let's not pretend that's not a real reason why people are leaving. Um, and there's another reason too, is that people are just fed up of just pain, pain and pain and not getting anything back. Uh, and just this constant take on taxation and, and no, it's just basically that, that light in the tunnel is getting more, more of a sharper point. And a lot of people are starting to notice this for their kids, like where are they going to be? And, and when they get of age to buy a home, get married, is it really the place they want their, to uh, have their kids live? Um, so you'll see people migrating out of Ontario clearly, but also migrating out of the country. And if you look at this, it says uh, cash rich buyers from provinces such as Ontario and, and British Columbia are aware that the sale of their property in Toronto or Vancouver will stretch that much further um, in Alberta or the Atlantic Canada's major centers. But ultimately, um, if you're kind of looking at that, it's, again, you're dealing with weather too. If you're in Alberta, uh, the weather's gonna be horrific um, as much as it's, the cost is effective, but it's gonna be horrific weather. Um, Nova Scotia, again, it's, it's, it's nice, but ultimately the weather's gonna be horrific. So I don't know uh, what, the, what the benefit is. I mean, ultimately you're, you're, not, you're paying less taxes, you're getting um, houses at a lower cost, but ultimately what is, you know, your ultimate re, um, goal in, um, in life for your kids and also your family. Um, 
that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the news going forward. I don't see anything else we have to look at currently right now that the market is on a, on a huge uptick, both sides of the border, based on the optimism. So uh, all is good, guys. If you have any questions, you can always reach out, 647-962-4372. Ciao.